Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Well, if you can hear the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with again. As always, my name is Dave Voigt. I am your host for this episode. And please don't forget, first off, to uh, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or on Podomatic, or you can subscribe and get the podcast available on YouTube. Find us at In The Seats. For today's episode, we are talking to director Ava Mulvad about Love Child, which is playing tomorrow night as a part of the Impact series. It is a, it is a new film and speaker series that is focused on social change, and it's uh, the centerpiece of a multimedia platform that's going to initiate, extend, and sustain discussions across not only the traditional media channels but new ones too like the important discussions that need to be have to be had much like uh the issues that are uh, re- prevalent in this film and uh, because love child basically starts uh it's on a cold winter's day a plane arrives in istanbul and a four-year-old iranian boy mani and his parents are on board obviously everything seems okay at first glance but the little boy doesn't know that these two people are escaping persecution from Iran and that they can never return and that his uncle quote unquote is actually his biological father. And it's, he's the secret offspring of a, of a love affair between a married man and a married woman who could never live together in Iran. And they had to, to flee their comfort country. And this whole film really is about these people trying to define their family and define their love and find a safe place to sort of, be and and be a family which is really what the core of the story is and i mean we we get an in, we get some insight into the uh bureaucracy of asylum seeking as they uh, as they make it to turkey and it's it's heartbreaking it's happy it's it, it's funny it's it's frustrating it's it's life and i mean and that's really what this film is all about and it's an important thing to sort of be able to show and sort of have discussions about because these uh these struggles are going on for so many people uh, right now to this day and uh well i'll uh, i'll stop blathering and uh, we can listen to director Ava Mulvad and we can talk a little bit more about the film all right but obviously first off thank you for the time today i really do appreciate it and uh, and congratulations on the film it it's really a a beautiful but also frustrating look at sort of the bureaucracy that really comes into these kind of situations now obviously i think my first question would be i'm always really kind of curious on how you as a documentarian sort of ultimately find these stories and get embedded with these people it's always difficult because you never know what is a good story in the end so you have to like there's a um, wonderful czechian from czechoslovakia a woman who who has done a lot of really great films and she said you you bet on some people and you see what life does to them and i think that's pretty much what we try to do we try to analyze um what is the relevance of the story? What is the quality of, of these characters? What, is, what kind of uh, development progresses could be followed? But uh, we just have to, to start out somewhere and see what grows. And, and um, in, in the style that this film is shot in and the style that I like to, to, to do is like cinema verite style where you follow people in, in real life scenes and um, not in an interview or archive. And that kind of, of storytelling, uh, you need something to happen to people and they have to react to that. And it's kind of cynical in a way you're looking for a drama or in this case, we followed this family um, because we felt that they were, they were expressive and not uh, shy in front of the camera. They were comfortable in showing their emotions. And um, we felt that that would, would be a good quality to um, approach this refugee issue from a more human angle than just, um, we've been listening to news, watching television about all of these horrible destinies out there and all, the, all of the statistics and numbers. 
but I felt that we had a chance through this family to kind of uh, really get to know someone and follow them and have a very personal uh, door to enter to this kind of big uh, problematic thing in the world today. Um, and, and the basic thing was like, if you were a refugee, how would that look? Could we tell a story that kind of put us in their shoes? So that was, was the approach from the beginning. Well, for sure. And I mean, it's a film that really does sort of, it, it, it feels so honest because we get so many sort of genuinely emotional responses to as they're progressing on their journey. How do you sort of manage to engender that sort of trust in a subject? Or is it just simply a, a case of them willing to be on camera as they live out this part of their lives? I think it's a combination because they were really, um, they wanted us to be there. They were really eager to be part of the film and they actually approached, um, I did, I do, I've done the film with, um, with two other directors and one of the directors knew the family. He met Sahan, the father and the family um, in Iran when he was, he was visiting as a tourist. And Sahan had, he's also, as, as you see, if you see the film, he also has like a, a function, a small job for the Secret Service. And one of his assignments was to, to chat with tourists in the bazaar to kind of check out what they were doing. And, and that, that way he met uh, Morton, who is my co-director. And when the family wanted to escape Iran, they felt more secure if they had someone watching them. So they called up this guy, Morton, and asked him if he would, think it would be interesting for him to make a documentary following their escape and their journey through um, the Uni United Nations asylum system and, and into some place where they thought they would, would go uh, and, and build their life on safe ground. So uh, actually they initiated the film and, and because um, it, was a, it, it turned out to take a long time for them to to get this dream fulfilled, to, to find a place to go. And, and the, the bureaucracy uh, of the UNHCR was quite heavy. So the film took a long time to, to, to film. And then the, the Morton, the director, didn't have the, the resources or the, the knowledge of doing a, a documentary film. He couldn't raise the money for it. So he came back to my office and we started working together on the project and, and financed the film while we were shooting it. Um, so I, I think that the trust came because they felt a need for the film and because we, um, we kind of um, had the patience to just stick around for so long. So they kind of got to knew us and we were three directors coming in and out of their house. Um, we had like a schedule so that if, if something happened to the asylum case during one special period, I knew that I would have to go because we, we were all working on other projects at the same time. So we kind of distributed the time between us so that we could go whenever the film needed it. And I think that's, that's a, quite a successful thing in the film that you actually feel that, you are, that the film is made out of organic moments and not out of things that has been shaped and formed because that was when the film crew was able to be there. For sure, and I mean, it's it really does sort of capture just the immediacy of the moment and i mean there's something that audiences don't always necessarily appreciate that as a documentarian i can imagine that a lot of your job just has to be sort of ready with a camera and a bag to go if you have to if the situation is kind of happening and i'm kind of curious for you as a filmmaker how do you sort of juggle sort of the situational kind of projects that you'll be working on versus something that may, something else that you may be working on, which you're, may involve more planning or more setup kind of thing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I've been quite stupid because I've been doing a lot of these situational documentary films. So you have to kind of go whenever they need you. Um, but it's also the kind of style that I like. So I've been, I've been kind of, but putting an effort into making films like that. But it is super difficult to plan because you always have to um, like cancel your own things and go whenever a film uh, has something important happening. So <clears throat> I think it's, 
I think I, I will have to try and, and do more of the more planning kind of things because it, it becomes very heavy in the end to have like three projects like this where whenever they need you, you have to, to go. So, um, but, but it's, I think it's also um, a luxury in a way to, to have the time and plan it in a way where you, where you don't force things to happen and where you, where you can um, be curious. I think that's a very important thing in documentary cinema then that you kind of, you, you stay open towards what, what is out there and not kind of force your own limitations, time limitations, whatever limitations on the project. Well, and I mean, I can imagine a lot of it comes down to patience as well, because I've got to imagine you may have found yourselves in situations where this, you know, you're, you're, you're documenting something, but it's kind of boring. I mean, 90, 95% <laughs> of what happens out there doesn't work for a film. It's too ordinary. It's too boring. It's too uh, dull. But you, you have to look for those moments that kind of, um, they, be, they are either funny or poetic or clear or dramatic. And, and I mean, reality is not like a Hollywood movie. There's a lot of stuff out there that doesn't work and it's a mess and it's unclear. And so, um, I mean, it's difficult to be efficient in this brand because you never know. Sometimes you've been looking for a scene for a week and suddenly it happens somewhere where you didn't see it coming. Um, or something just uh, turns out differently than you expected, but maybe much better. So, um, I think that, that if you're into that game, there's a kind of, of, you're like hunting wild animals almost. You have to, have to be prepared. You have to know what you're looking for, but then you also have to be open and ready if it could take all night. Well, and it's a weird balance too, because on one end, I'm sure as a filmmaker, you're, you wanna to try to actively shape your narrative, but at the same time, you don't wanna influence your subjects either. I can imagine it's a difficult line to sort of walk. Yeah, I think in the beginning, the first half year or so, I'm around participants. I'm I'm very like uh, searching for the right things and very open. Um, and then I go into editing for like just the trailer material and trying to figure out what what is actually the the interesting parts of this material. And then from there, I I start to shape more the story and what I'm looking for. And um, and of course, I think it's you have to stay open and, and be curious, but you also have to focus your material so that you, you know what is actually the plot, what could be the motor of the film. So you have to think in a, in a cinematic structural, structured way to get anything to work in the end. You can't leave everything to the editing. And I also work a lot with the, with the, with the participants to understand what I'm doing. So I talk a lot about what I think the film should be about, what I find interesting, uh, and I don't find it that I'm like interfering or um, like destroying the authenticity of, of, of the moments. I just feel that they know more what is my focus of the film and what they should deliver if they, if they can deliver it. So for me, it's, I, don't, I don't believe in this, that you have to hide your agenda um, so that they don't know what you're doing and, and they can be authentic. Well, I mean, I think that really does come through because, I mean, and there's there's some elements in the film, particularly just the staggering bureaucracy around sort of asylum seeking and just sort of the steps that you have to go through. If you watch it play out sort of long form in real life, I'm sure it's boring as hell. But in this film, it really is, it is quite fascinating. And I mean, it's for you is there something during all this that you kind of learned in the process? Because I did not, I knew that I figured the bureaucracy would be a lot, but I didn't think it would be that bad. No. Well, I, I've been, uh, I've been around refugees before and I, I know that that uh, feeling of uh, not being able to influence your destiny and the, just the, the time waiting where you can do nothing. You can't, you can't handle your situation. You can't take care of things. That's so frustrating. Um, and 
I knew that that would probably happen to this family as well, also because we are in times now where there are more refugees than ever before, I guess, and um, in Turkey especially, they are so overwhelmed by people uh, needing protection. Um, so I think that was, was a very strong um, aspect of the film, but it's difficult to show because it's... Um, paperwork and, and faceless bi biocracy is, is, is difficult to kind of activate that into, um, to, but, but the consequence of that towards this family, I mean, the big system that this family is just a little drop in that big system and there are millions of people uh, like them out there. Um, I think that that worked pretty well when we kind of condensed those scenes, um, the fact that that's, so important issues are determined over the phone, on the internet, by really um, um, dry answers. Uh, and it means a lot in real life. And I, I, I feel that that uh, side of the film, we kind of, we kind of we solved that issue pretty well. Um, I think what I learned from the film um, it was more from, for me to think about my own privilege in a way I, I never thought so much about having basic rights, having um, having um, a passport I can travel with, having uh, the right to vote, having a police station across from me in the street where I can go uh, and ask them to take care if my bicycle is stolen, whatever. These kind of things that give you a kind of a, a stable ground uh, to, to build your life upon. I always t I've always taken that for granted, but uh, filming with this family, I really came to appreciate that. Now, when you're making something like this, does having, being able to document sort of the moment where they get married, is that one of the more happier moments that you get to have when you're putting together something like this? Yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, I have had a lot of happy moments, even in the more sad periods of the, the life in the, the family, because it, it's a very, you cannot see that from the film, it's a very loving family. Yeah, it really um, is. It's a it's a very um, it's a very nice people to to visit. Um, basically, I, I really came to to enjoy my trips there and to to follow the family uh, to kind of make uh, be part of their 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 household for for a little while. Um, but but it it's also um, you can, you come to to really wish that that their their project will will succeed. And when they got married, it was, I had the feeling it was very modest, as you can see in the film. It was very funny in a way, because we really were just running from one office to the other uh, and not knowing whether they could make it happen. And then when it happened, it was not only that day, stress, paperwork, whatever, but it was such a long period of time in their life where they have had to struggle to get each other. And in a way, it's a very beautiful love story and I also thought a lot about that when have I, when did I ever put so much effort into um, my relationship that I would like flee my country and leave everything I had just to be with this person and to take care of this small family I think that that day was very much um, uh, we, we felt that very strong all of us that 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 day was special in terms of uh, many many years of struggle it was ended that day well, and you feel that in the film as well, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I love, I love what you said about just sort of frustration because that's such a universal feeling that so many people can relate to. And I'm kind of curious, after you debuted a TIFF here in Toronto, I'm kind of curious, as you've toured the film around the world, how have sort of audience uh, reactions been? Like, is there anything that's caught you off guard as you've sort of gotten to show it to different audiences? Well, we, we had the luck to have half a year of real screenings in real cinemas before the corona shut down the, the festival circuit. Um, so I, I think the, the, the most common reaction has been to be interested in what, what, ha what has happened to the family and also um, to, to be um, impressed by the intimacy uh, of, the sh of, of this film. And, and uh, I think what, what has been a, a kind of a weird difficult reaction for me uh, has been some of the some of the Iranian audience uh, a lot of them love the film but there have also been um, 
reactions from some Iranian audience about the could this be true that this guy worked for the secret service in this way and all of these um, conspiracy theories or real um, uh, what people who really know knows how it is to live in Iran to me that has been difficult to navigate in I've, I've been trusting the the version that this family has told me uh, and I think they are trustworthy but I don't know um, Iranian culture or Iranian secret service system how it really works and whether this is is true or not and I think that that kind of a more journalistic approach to a topic uh, somehow does not interest me and it, it's not uh, it's not very fruitful for me to kind of um, debate in the way that that kind of should uh, put questions towards the trustworthiness of, of these participants for sure no I mean I guess just to put a bow on this because we did uh, we did talk a little bit about the moment of the wedding which was a happy moment but I mean I think the thing that really struck me the most about the film was just how it ended it wasn't necessarily a happy ending it wasn't necessarily a sad ending it was an ending and I'm kind of curious from your perspective as a filmmaker, how important is, is it when you're making films like this to not try and sort of twist the narrative one way or another to sort of get something across and just let sort of the truth sit there unvarnished for people to have it sink in? Well, I think the truth is always uh, difficult. I mean, when does a story like this end? Yeah. Um, we've been trying to end it for years. And we thought in the beginning, uh, it could be like two or three years and then they would be sent somewhere out in the world and, uh, and get a chance to, to establish themselves and we could leave them there. Or... So when that didn't happen, I, I shouldn't like tell too much if you haven't seen the film, I don't know, but well, it, it didn't happen like that. And so we had to find another way of putting a kind of a feeling of closure to, to the story and, um, then you have to look for that. What could that be? And you have to speculate what kind of plots and strands, like what kind of layers in the story uh, could do that for you. And, and in the end, we found, um, we found a way where we felt that, that there, was, um, there was something that, had, that we, the father gets uh, his answer for his uh, asylum uh, seeking process. It, it, it ends with him um, getting an answer to and we felt that from there we, we could kind of uh, land the film. So, but it, 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 I mean, you always have to to try things out and, and it's always difficult in the editing to know exactly what feels like an ending because what, I mean, they, they are still out there. Their life has not ended. Their struggle is still real. Uh, they have pretty much a lot of the same problems as they have in the film. So. I don't think it's really ending anywhere, but it, the feeling of an ending, um, you, can, you can search for that. Well, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's a film that's, as much as it's about the politics around the issue, it's, it's more so about the, the family's struggle to, to find happiness and sort of take control of their own destiny and be a family. And I mean, I think that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about the film. And I just want to say thank you again for the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you for um, putting your effort into bringing this to an audience.